What's up guys? We've got some more news for Limbus Company. Uh, this time we're getting sneak peek uh, into both identities and both egos related to the event. So we'll start with the Gregor, uh, two star. Uh, his first skill is a two coiner and it's on the first hit it will inflict paralyze and if target has bleed it will also paralyze next turn and on second hit it will inflict bleed now his skill 2 is 1 coin and on hit it will inflict bleed count and also inflict bind next turn and his skill 3 is a 4 coin skill on first hit it will inflict bleed on second paralyze on third paralyze and on fourth it will heal hp based on targets bleed his defense has nothing additional um, and his passive will heal HP at the start of the combat phase and his support passive is at the start of the combat phase the ally with the lowest HP will heal the boost will be higher um, of the uh, of the Ryoshu passive the like her passive healing will be higher if he is present. So basically, you know, they work together. Um, there's some a little bit of uh, um, good synergy between the two. Um, so going over the skills, uh, he seems like he is okay bleed unit inflicts bleed on every skill which is nice um, skill one being two coins is interesting um, we'll see how strong it actually is his skill two unfortunately is only one coin but it's probably gonna be the traditional high base and high coin value uh, since it's only one coin and his skill 4 on the other hand is 4 coin which is nice uh, it kind of gives me vibes to the um, to his 3 star version already we have because I think that one also ha was 4 coiner I don't remember what his second skill was like how, how many coins it had um, but yeah I would say he should be relatively okay unit I don't think he will be broken but um, he should be okay, plus he heals, so if we ever need uh, sustain in the fight, uh, stuff like that, then uh, he, might be, he might be a decent choice for it, since he will heal, um, he will heal passively, so, and then he heals based on target's bleed, which is also interesting, um, I wonder if it's 1 HP for 1 bleed, maybe? Uh, so like in bleed comps he could drain quite a lot but this only heals him I'm pretty sure so that's kind of harder to utilize all right on to the free star Ryoshu um, so her first skill is also two coins uh, on first hit it will inflict bleed count and then on second hit it will gain appetite appetite is a new buff which will increase the healing provided by her passive um, and you can spend that buff when the passive activates uh, her skill 2 is a free coin uh, and on first hit it will inflict bind the next turn second hit on heads it will inflict bleed and then on third hit the, if the target had bleed or paralyze, it will inflict HP healing down next turn, which will decrease the HP healing provided by, well, passive ability skills, coin effects, so pretty much anything. Now her skill 4 is 4 coin as well. It will boost damage based on targets missing HP. And all hits, the first, second and third hit will boost the damage of the final fourth coin so now this is th this one is interesting um um i'm very curious how much damage this will 
this will actually do um but okay let's let's go through the rest before i go on um so on evade you will gain haste next turn which is okay um now her passive after defeating an enemy heal the ally with the lowest hp if this unit has appetite you spend it to heal based on its count so or to boost the healing based on its count and then her support passive uh, when an enemy is defeated the ally with the lowest hp heals now the support passive uh works whoever kills uh to my understanding so it doesn't matter if if she's the one who kills or not it will heal uh whoever is lowest now her normal passive though says after defeating an enemy so i'm assuming she has to be the one to kill uh, the enemy and when she does then she will heal the ally with the lowest hp and she will heal even more if she has the appetite which you get from using s1 or skill one overall looks pretty good um you have two coin first skill three coin second skill four coin uh third skill so very high coin uh, coin values which makes sense considering how much slashing she does in the in the preview video um her skill free is very interesting to me since it's it's kind of like an execute ability i guess uh so if the target is already i would imagine half health or one third health this will kill obviously depending on the target but for the most part it probably uh kills if those hit i would love to see the damage on this um i think it could be pretty pretty fucking nice um and yeah i mean the rest is pretty much you know bind bleed uh it looks good it looks good uh will she be broken i don't think she will overtake the uh current three star identity of her but i think she will be a good um like good choice if you need again sustain and healing uh, i think this might be a good choice uh, to bring her into the team um, especially if you're not using her uh, other free star version for like damage and specifically bleed comp then this this might be a decent uh decent unit i, I think she will be pretty good overall all right let's go to the egos now the first ego is the sinclair lifetimes 2 um and this one is actually pretty interesting um so the awakening skill is indiscriminate so it can target allies and it's aoe uh targets the unit with the least hp if the target is an ally this deals zero damage now on the heads if the target is an ally it will heal them proportionally to users max hp if it lands on tails it will inflict burn if the target is an ally it will give him haste and ego resource amp next turn now the corrosion skill also indiscriminate and it will target the unit with the least hp and before attack you can spend it will spend random ego resources to boost damage and then on hit it will inflict burn count the passive is that the tails uh whenever the coins land on tails it will inflict burn if it hits the enemy so this one is interesting because this is ego purely made well not purely for healing but it is it is a definitely a healing uh ego because th th this you can actually uh plan ahead and see well if the lowest 
HP target is actually your unit, you can choose to use this uh, awakening skill to actually heal them. Um, because it will always target, at least in the awakening version, it will always target the unit with uh, least HP. So that's pretty cool. Um, now, if you hit the tails, it will also give them haste and ego resource amp, which I think ego resource amp was, I don't think we had that buff before. Um, but what it does is it will increase the amount of ego resources uh, you earn from skills by the effects count for one turn. So that means if it, in, it gives you one ego resource amp, like one count, right, on the buff, uh, that means if you're using, let's say, uh, orange skill, last skill, normally you would get only one last for using it, right? But with that buff, you would get two, okay? Uh, now this will become even better once you have like two or three moves or uh, like skill bars you can use in the fight. So if fight went on for a couple of turns and that unit has, uh, you know, maybe three uh, skill bars, then, you know, they can use free skills with that buff. Every skill will get additional resource. So instead of getting free resources uh, from from their turn, you will get six. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then the, the corrosion version. Um, the only thing that sucks about this one is the fact that before attack, it will spend random ego resources. Um, like, I personally don't like randomness. I like to be more in control. Uh, so I usually am not a fan whenever something random happens because, it like, this can eat the resources you needed to cast um, some other ego. So that one, that one a little more annoying. But the Awakening version looks really nice. Um, this, this seems like a great... Uh, choice for healing which seems to be the the theme in this event like every single one heals i think mine is this ego actually so um all right let's go over the don ego lifetime stew the first skill uh before attack it will boost damage based on current last resources on hit, it will inflict a burn count. The corrosion version is indiscriminate and it will target the unit with the most HP. Before attack, it will boost damage based on current last resources. Then it will spend those last resources uh, by the amount of last uh, resonance. Now further boost damage by resource spent. On hit, it will inflict burn count. And the passive is that at the start of the turn, it will convert random non-last ego resources into last resource. Now, immediately out of the gate, I like this. I like the passive for the ego. Uh, the fact that like at the start of the turn, it will convert random resources into last. That one is not like... It's good for this specific ego, right? But it will suck if you need resources for other egos as well. And it will just fucking eat them away. Um, so that portion I don't like. There's probably a way where you set up your team to pretty much only use last. And then this will not be as bad. But then you will be cannibal, uh, like taking away last resources from this uh, ego. So mm, this one is a little, a little harder uh, for me to mm, to see if it's like. <sighs> can it be good? Sure, but my issue is I think it like every now and then it will annoy you with the randomness here. I think that's that's how it's gonna work out. Um, now, 
it is interesting the fact that this ego relies on you having a lot of lust and the more lust you have the more damage this does so i'm very curious about the numbers um and the corrosion version targeting the most hp which in this case it was the least hp um so that one that one i'm i'm curious about to to see the the damage numbers and i want to see the damage numbers on pretty much all of those uh identities and egos because i feel like a lot a lot of uh the power relies on on what numbers we're getting actually so um but yeah i i don't think any of those egos or any of those um identities are gonna be like you know sss tier uh, super broken um but i think they will be decent i think they will be decent and they provide more utility than anything um especially healing stuff so i think they always will have um a chance to get some use in the future uh, content to come so it's definitely worth regardless it's definitely worth to grab all of them um from the event and yeah in the future where other content uh will come those egos and and identities might be stronger because we will need maybe healing uh, uh, that kind of stuff so again definitely um definitely worth grabbing everything here but all right that's it uh from me and i'll see you guys next time peace